Good morning, good morning South Africa, Salamat siang to all my Indonesian friends, yes, hallelujah, it's Friday morning and what a privilege to sit around the Word of God with you. Good morning, good morning, are you excited about today, are you excited about what God is about to do in and through you today? Yes, we live in that times where God is called, but uh, you know, not many people answer the call. So, yeah, good morning, good morning, hallelujah. Uh, yeah, the week was quite busy, but yes, thank you, God, it's, it's Friday again, hallelujah. Yeah, good morning. Um, we just give a moment. Uh, I just want to encourage you, you know, the more you spend time in the Word of God, the more you will understand why the storms in your life happen. The more... You, you will understand Jesus Christ. The more you will understand your calling, the more you will understand Father God. You will understand the glory of, of the Father. Ina, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Ronaldo, goeiemorgen. Helena, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a privilege that I can share the word with you. Um, yeah, I really, you know, we live in a time we can either focus on all the negative things or we can focus, you know, God's plan and purpose for your life. Um, the main thing is, you know, we will stand bef before God one day and He will ask you, you know, what have you done? Pastor Peter, good uh, Good morning, Pastor. Um, so the thing is, you know, um, yeah. What will, he, well, what will we say if we come empty-handed? You know, and every day that's gone past, we could have done something. One thing I've learned, Pastor Marius, Guiamore, good morning, is, you know, there's always an option. You know, uh, you know there's always a way. And, and God, give us that wisdom, give us that understanding. But let's start today. I'm really excited to share the Word of God with you this morning. Um, and just to encourage you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that every word will be blessed. I pray that you will touch everybody, that you will raise them up in the Spirit, Lord. Whatever brings them down, whatever lies the seed of the enemy, whatever circumstances, whatever storms, whatever is understanding or not understanding, Lord, whatever people find themselves, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will raise them up. You right now, just touch them, just fill the atmosphere with the presence of and the glory of the Father. I pray, God, that, that, that your glory will just manifest. Father, we can say many things, but it's in your presence that we feel and experience the changes and we to get into the spiritual realm. And therefore, Lord, I also pray, bless this word. Bless the one who hears this word. But most of all, Lord, that we will be encouraged. I thank you for the opportunity, Father, that I can share the word of God. I can share the word just, and also, Lord, just to encourage people and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give the enemy anyway. doesn't matter how dark it is. Doesn't matter if there's no answers. God is there. God is in control. And therefore, Lord, but you are, we are called for greater things. We are not called to stagnate, but we are called for greater things. And may you touch us today. Just touch us in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, my darling wife. Uh, good morning. Uh, Salamat siang. We win. I don't know if I've not yet greeted. I see Aggie, you also on. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. This morning, I just want to share something. And uh, the theme I want to share with you, are you the reason that people hear about Jesus Christ? Are you the reason? Are your testimony? Are when you uh, amidst people and you speak, what are you speaking? Do you speak, you know, what God has done in your life? Uh, so many times, you know, we want to see people saved, but because ourselves we are not excited, we've become just ordinary in our Christianity, we've lost the passion. So what happened? We do not speak. We do not speak with that I know that I know. And, and I, want to, I, I want to bring you today and I want to encourage you. You know, we are called wherever we are. 
to, 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 to speak about Jesus. Uh, let's go to the, to the Word of God in John. Michelle, Pastor Michelle, good morning, good morning, good uh, morning. I want to read this, not the whole story. I just want to take some of the things in John chapter 4, the woman of Samaria. And uh, the, the whole theme is here this morning. I mean, let's look what happened to her. But let's look at the fruit on what has happened to her. And that's the thing I want to speak to you this morning about. Are there fruit on your testimony? So let's read in John chapter 4 verse 16. Jesus said, so this is the woman of Samaria. You know, Jesus came to the well. Daniel, good morning, my friend. To the well. And then this woman of Samaria came to fetch water. And Jesus had this conversation. So we start reading uh, in verse 16. Jesus said, so go get your husband and bring him back here. But I'm not married, the woman answered. That is true, Jesus said. For you've been married five times, and now you're living with a man who's not your husband. You have told the truth. You know, when I read this, and I think, you know, every one of us have a story. Anyone, every one of us have, at some point, a past. Not something that we... That we may be proud of. But we went through things. This woman being married five times. That we can we say she's just unlucky. That, that she just five times make the wrong choices. And the sixth time she was not willing to get married. But just stay with the person. Um, you know this is just the thing. You know whenever Jesus touched someone. It doesn't matter. You know where you come from. It doesn't matter what went in on through your life. The main thing is when God touches you, something is about to change. So Jesus has this conversation, uh, Pastor Owen, so, uh, and, 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 and actually the thing is I want to tell you, you know, she had a past, but she had a bright future. When God touches us, our past changes and it will produce light in the future. Let's go on. And, and I just want to encourage you. Let's go to verse 24. God is spirit, a spiritual being. And those who worship Him must worship Him and in spirit and in truth, reality. The woman said to Him, I know that, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called the Christ, the Anointed One. And when He arrives, He will tell us everything we need to know and make it clear to us. Yet she also had an expectation of, of the Messiah. She also can say, listen, we know somebody's coming. Uh, the sad part is many people that live without Christ has no expectation of, you know, of, of, of what is needed, that Jesus is the way to eternal life. Verse 27, uh, verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who now speak with you, Amy, Jesus revealed himself. It's so amazing. This woman, that's actually a bad woman with a bad reputation. That many people will just walk past her because her life testifies of the one bad situation, bad decisions from the next one to the next one. And she, she find herself, you know, also in a situation where she had to fetch water. She didn't have much money and, and even went through all of this. Maybe an outcast of, of her own society, her own area where she lived. But yet, there was a longing to meet the Messiah. And Jesus so easy revealed himself to this woman. And then verse 27. Just then his disciples came and they wondered, were surprised to find him talking with a woman, a married woman. Now, I mean, she was not married. She was left with her. But because of the way, you know, there were certain cultural things that will show, listen, you are married. However, not one of them asked him, what are you inquiring about? Or what do you want? Or why do you speak with her? Then the woman left the water jar, left her water jar, verse 28, and went away to the town and she began telling the people. So the people left the town and set out to go. Now what's interesting when I read, the woman left her water jar. You see, sometimes we have to let go of the things in our life that brought us to a place where maybe we're not good enough in the eyes of other people. But when we meet the Son of God, 
we can leave those things that brought us to Him. And we can be that living water well, that spring that He replaces with our efforts. You know, with our efforts. And it just, I mean, why, did, why, why, why was it needed to, 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 to be written in the Bible? You know, for us to say, you know, when we come to Jesus, whatever we brought us to Him, whatever is the connection, you know, there's also a place to let go because you'll find much more. Because that water jar, you know, she would have still had to get water. But she find the living fountain. She find the living water, Jesus Christ. And it's so amazing. She left the water. She believed that he was the, you know, he was the Messiah. Jesus said, I am he. You know, um, she immediately believed that. And it just grasped people. And, and she just understand one thing. I need to tell people I've met the one. He had arrived. I came to this well and this strange Hebrew person talked to me and then I find out he is the one and I was so convinced I left what brought me there and I went with an with a greater joy to speak about the one that I have found so the people left the town and set out to go to her testimony was so powerful that people said listen we have to see that so they didn't mock her maybe there were some but her testimony, maybe they saw a transformation in her face, in her voice. Maybe a softness, maybe just a gentleness, maybe just the love of Christ. Maybe because of this fountain, changed her. The woman that went to the well and the woman that came from the well were two different women. I say sometimes we need to leave our jar, our opinions behind to make room for a new spiritual spring of life. Let's jump to verse 39. Now numerous, uh, numerous Samaritans from that town believed and trusted in him because of what that woman said. And this is my theme for this morning. Are your testimony, are the things you speak drawing people to Jesus Christ? So they believed and trusted because of that woman. Doesn't matter her past, doesn't matter the mistakes she made. She, they saw the living Christ in them. When she declared and testified, He told me everything that I ever did. Verse 4, So when the Samaritans arrived, they asked Him to remain with them, with them. And He did stay there for two days. Then many more believed in and adhered to and relied. Pastor Bertha, Goeiemorgen, good morning. And relied on Him because of His personal message, what He Himself has said. And they told the woman, now we no longer believe, trust, have faith just because of what you have said. You see, many people only hold on, on the testimony of other people, but they've never met the Messiah. These people said, listen, we need to see for ourselves. We need, we already believe on your word, what your testimony is. But also we have a desire to see for ourselves. Good morning, Sophia. And that's also the thing. Many people never move to that thing and said, I've heard, now I believe. No, no. You have to move on to have that, you know, that encounter with Jesus. And they told the woman, now we no longer believe, trust, having faith, just because of what you've said. For we have heard Him ourselves personally, and we know that He truly is the Savior of the world, the Christ. Hallelujah. Can our testimonies, when we speak to other people, not change them? Is it because we, we, we have too much religion and not really relationship? Is it because we've lost the joy of the Lord? Is it because we do not bear the fruit that we lost, you know, our, our, our way, how we speak about Christ? I said this Samaritan woman grasped what Jesus said with a further that came from an awareness of her real need. There's so many people that only need Jesus. You know, they don't need the preaching. They just need a revelation. They need, need to see Jesus in your life. I mean, this whole thing, the transaction was one of fascination. She just an ordinary day came to fetch water. Maybe she carried all of these things of her life being a mis mis mistake. And, you know, there were so many mistakes being made in her life. I mean, she had come with a bucket. 
But Jesus sent her back with the spring of living water. And I want to say this morning, Nico Huyamora, good morning, young man. I want to say to you this morning, you know, just come as you are. Because God will never send you away empty-handed. She came with a jar, but she came back with a living spring of living water. Amen. She had come as a reject, being married five times, staying with the, the sixth person. He sent her back being accepted by God Himself. It's not about people. It's about being accepted by God. Amen. She came wounded. He sent her back home. I can just imagine, you know, the transformation that happened with this woman. She came laden with questions. He sent her back as a source for answers. She came with living a life of quiet desperation. She ran back overflowing with hope. The disciples missed it all because it was lunchtime for them. They were more concerned about lunch than what's about to happen. They had no discernment. And Jesus stayed behind because he discerned there was someone that can change the city. Maybe you the person and people keep on telling you about the mistakes in your life. People keep on putting it in front of you and say you will never change. This woman had been married five times. She's now living. I mean, she's got no testimony. But yet, when she was touched by Jesus, everything changed. I say our humanness with its desires, perceptions, and emotion often override the clear evidence of what we have seen and heard. What is there in your life that overrides what you've experienced when you met Jesus Christ? Was it the, the pressures of life? Was the storms too much? That you've lost your voice as a testimony of telling what Jesus did for you. That you lost your, your passion for Jesus Christ. That you lost your love. And I want to say to you this morning, God wants to revive you. God wants to pick you up today. God wants to do something in your life. Amen. I say we find difficulty in perceiving the Spirit of God in our daily routines. Because our lives become dominated by our concerns. For present conditions. So one of the biggest things that rob us of the joy of, of the Lord. Is our present conditions. When we do pause long enough. To allow Jesus to engage us. We hear him clearly confirm that he is the Christ. What am I telling? This woman came to a well just to get water. She came with a lot of negative things around her. But she left with a well, a spring well of living water. Maybe they once you had that. Maybe the, the, the pressures and the things you went through sort of made you to, to become idle, to become stagnant. And I want to tell you this morning, God wants to raise you up. God wants to touch you this morning. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and find in Jesus their Savior and Lord. Amen. Even more blessed are those that keep His word close to their hearts. And draw daily from the springs of living water as they experience the assurance and abundant life found in Him. Psalm 63 verse 3 to 5 says the following. My lips will praise you because your mercy is better than life itself. So I will thank you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands to pray in your name. You satisfy my soul with the richest food. My mouth will sing your praises with joyful lips. You know, a picture of someone that that living well is just bubbling over, bubbling over. Now we go to verse 42 in John chapter 4. Then they told the woman, our faith is no longer based on what you have said. I believe there are many Christians that their faith is based on what they hear but never met Jesus. You know, I, I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church. Uh, I was active in school, uh, in, the, in the youth. Um, but I was 27 years old when I met Jesus. So I grew up in a church, but I've never met Him. My fountain of, of the place where I've met Him was when I was 27. And then I realized who Jesus is. Amen. And as I said, for me it was just what, the, what the, you know, the minister was saying and what everybody was saying. 
But there was a time I moved past that and I've met him myself. It says our faith is no longer based on what you have said, but we have heard him ourselves and we know that he really is the savior of the world. So we have to point people to Jesus, but you know, they have to meet him. I mean, this woman whose reputation was questionable now enjoy a position of importance among her neighbors. God just changed her. He uplifted her. It was not an empty, empty promise just in her spirit. She was the reason they had heard about Jesus. She was the reason. The, the cast out one. The questionable one. She's the one that met Jesus. And I'm telling you, your past was the reason that you've met Jesus. But don't let your past come between your testimony when you start speaking about Jesus. Her enthusiasm motivated them to go seek Him. She was so excited with this living water. Everyone wanted to see what made her change. Because they acted on her testimony. They encountered the person of Christ, you know, the Messiah. Amen. And Jesus stayed there two days. And they've discovered also for themselves that He's the Savior. He's the promised one. I mean, He's the Messiah. So one thing we need to, to learn, Jesus stand, you know, at the center of this lesson. There is no doubt that He commanded the attention of all those involved in the narrative. You know, all the, the whole city. I mean, He encountered the Samaritan woman, you know, at Jacob's well, drawing her into a conversation despite the cultural traditions that should have prevented such a conversa conver uh, conversation. He quietly and patiently directed her through a discourse that revealed her unhappy life, saying, you know what, where's your husband? You see, God always wants to restore you. He doesn't just want to fill you. He wants to bring restoration to your life. Then quietly but firmly, he informed her that he was the Messiah. And this woman, excited about Christ's revelation, returned to the city and told the people about this strange man. She related everything that happened throughout the course you know, of their conversation. The people in turn become excited about the prospects of meeting a man that could indeed be the Messiah. So many people, you will say, pray for my family. I want to ask you today, what about your testimony? What about Christ Jesus, that living fountain in you? That is supposed to become a testimony to change them. It's supposed to make them excited. But you see, We've lost in many cases that we've lost the joy because we allowed the devil to place a lot of things in your well. You've been stuck. It's time to open that well. Amen. And after that, they rushed out of the city to meet this man, you know, that she, that she talked about. Amen. Can you imagine that many people came to know Jesus because of her? What about you? What is your testimony every morning when you wake up? Is there an expectation that maybe somebody can be changed? Somebody can look at you and say, I want what you have. You go through this deep valley and that darkness and through this, but every day you're smiling. Every day you just stand firm. I want what you have. But you know what is the problem? We've become like the world. We do not live in the spirit anymore. We start moaning about this thing and this thing and, and about this and this. And, and we've lost that excitement that people are seeking for in you and me. Amen. So finally, after the discourse with Jesus in those two days, most of that city accepted Jesus. They received Jesus into their city, into their homes, into their hearts. Now the question is, could the same happen today in our lives, in our homes, our towns, our cities? And I want to tell you, I want to say yes. Because of the living fountain that's within you. Maybe you should stop looking at the mistakes and stop looking at the negative things. But start looking at Jesus and let him just touch and open that well again. So that by what you keep on speaking about the greatness and the fullness of God can touch other people. And that's why I want to encourage you to this morning. I want to ask you, are you the reason 
that people hear about Jesus Christ? Are you preaching to them or are, are you a demonstration of that love, of that joy, of that grace? Are you a demonstration that can influence people in your family, in your city, in your neighborhood? Or does you? Maybe you just look the same. Maybe you've just become a cold Christian. You've lost your own. You've lost your own passion. It's like the well that once was so excited, you know, had been stuck with a lot of dirt. And that's what the enemy does. But I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray that God will touch you, that Jesus will just open that well, that that well of spring, spring living water will start to flow again. And that it will be seen in your life, not just by the words you spoken, but that people will see and say, I want that. I want that joy. I want that joy when you're in a storm. Doesn't matter, you still celebrate Jesus. It's like you have this relationship, this intimate relationship with God. You know, it doesn't matter. You know who you are. I would like to pray for you today. Because you see, there are people waiting, waiting. And maybe you are the key. But maybe you've been stuck a little. Maybe, hello, my ma, hello, Lee. Uh, maybe, you know, all the things that happen around you just make you negative. And you've lost that joy. I would like to pray for you today. And I would like you... To say, listen, it's time to rise up. Just as this woman. Maybe this morning you wake up and you're tired. And so many things that you face. So many things that you have to go through. And all you can think is about the natural. But there's an there's a, there's a anointing. There's a, a life. There's a spring of water. That's just waiting to be reopened again. And I would like to pray for you. That God will just ignite you. That He will just take away this burdens and that you will come and feel excited about Jesus again. And then just become a testimony about that excitement, that life, you know, and your relationship with Jesus. And they will, they will want to have that. You don't need to preach for them. Just testify. Let them see the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Amen. I would like to pray for you. Father, we have such a lesson to learn. Lord Jesus, this woman had many theories about Jacob's well and where the people supposed to pray and where they're supposed to do. But all of those theories were actually nothing when she met you. We have maybe have a lot of theories about church and about religion and, and, and all we went through. And, but I believe there are people out there seeking hunger and thirst for a touch from you. And I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, touch them right now. Let them, let that well that's been stuck with dirt, with all the things they went through, just lift it, cleanse it, break over a new well of joy and the fruit of the Spirit. Let them experience, let them experience what this woman experienced, the excitement. Even she came from, a bad background with so many mistakes. Yet, Jesus chose to spend time with her. Sit down and bring life to her life that was actually not very good. Lord, I pray for the people that, that feel like this woman. They have so many mistakes. I pray, God, they, that the jar that they're carrying around is just limited. That you will... That you will take that away and that you will just open that well of living water again. Touch them today. Raise them up, Lord. Change their mind. Let them not be conformed to this world, Lord. But let them be transformed in the Spirit, Lord. I pray, Lord, open that well. So raise them up with the joy. Let them see and experience the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. I pray that their testimony, that people will say, I've heard about Jesus from so and so and I've met Jesus myself and now I've become a testimony of that joy with that knowing and understanding that I've met the Messiah Holy Spirit touch everyone I pray that you will raise them up break every chain break every every idea and like this woman she left that jar 
because she didn't need it anymore. Whatever efforts we had, let us just leave it behind and let us allow the Spirit of God to breathe life, just to breathe that life into us this morning and raise us up so that you will be glorified, that our families, our friends will be touched and coming to Jesus because of what they've seen and heard in our lives. I pray God bless them. I just release the anointing of God over them, a fresh anointing. And may you be glorified in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Hello, Lydia. So yes, hallelujah, praise God. May you be filled with the Holy Spirit with a fresh anointing. May you have an amazing weekend. Don't stop smiling or laughing. Just know that Jesus is Lord. Just know that the Spirit of God is there. Just open and, you know, start doing and, and, and start speaking and start testifying and let the water just flow and God will do the rest. May you have an amazing weekend. Jesus loves you. Just know you are special. God bless you. Amen.